We are here today at Simi Valley City Hall where Elton Gallagly is talking to the survivors uh, and the family members of the train disaster that happened in Simi Valley two years ago. He's brought together the transportation agency, the insurance companies, and the families to help facilitate and negotiate uh, an equitable settlement for all. It's a very emotionally charged meeting and uh, they've gone on a break, they've gone back in, and uh, we're here to do interviews with the various people that are involved in this process. Uh, please bear with us as we do the interviews. We get to talk to those in government, in the transportation agencies, and the victims and their family. Thank you. Yeah, this is this is really about putting a face mm -hmm. on the victims, so that the Viola can see who we are and see that it's 150 families, not just you know numbers. It's about doing what's right. And it's a loss to the family. It's, it, it, it is, is a, loss. a loss of we, these. Like I said, were the working people. These were the dads coming home, the moms coming home, the college students coming home for a weekend, and it's irreplaceable. And then we, we have lost, and then we see those that are injured, that can barely walk, that are talking about their lives being changed. And the amount, basically, it's not that we want a lot of money, we just want as much compensation for the people that lost you know, their jobs, they lost their lost ability everything. to walk. Yeah, so many of them say that. It's, it's amazing. And we, we feel like we lost everything by losing a, a beloved husband and, and a dad. And the, the number sounds big, but when you realize you've got 150 families, and like my husband was a sole provider for our family, and so it has been an interesting journey. God has taken care of us, but I, I must say, I would love my kids to all make it, be able to go to college, and all those things. And the estimated damages we feel like would be maybe three times the amount. That law was only meant to help and protect government entities, not a private corporation. So I feel like they're hiding underneath the law. Maybe today they'll see the story. We're hoping that they have a heart. Thank you so much for spending time. With yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, it's not just it's not just Washington. Uh, they uh they're very courageous folks that young daughters and some others wives and they're afraid. They're afraid uh, for what is in store in the future. There's so much uncertainty about whether they're going to be able to pay the bills. People say, well, gee, $200 million, that's a lot of money. And I have to confess, the first time I heard $200 million, that's a lot of money. But when you start counting 25 lives, 135 or 40 serious or critically injured people, many of them bills already over a million dollars. And that doesn't account for how they're going to be able to survive for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years in their life. Congressman, do you think this meeting was fruitful or effective? Uh, I'm more optimistic in leaving today than I was when I came in. And uh, uh, the folks uh, presented themselves very, very well today and uh, communicated very well to Veolia. I think if uh, all the facts were known, that uh, I don't know how they could have communicated the message better. And there was no pre-arranged uh, script. I had a lot of folks call me before the meeting today and said, what would you like me to say? Just hold your card. So what's next? Um, I guess uh, 
we'll continue to be talking with the Dole Corporation, and uh, hopefully, I could, I could. They're human beings. You can't avoid the facts. I mean, you, you, you have a job of protecting the corporation, and, and, and that's a noble profession, but not quite as noble as being a human being. Anything else you'd like to add? Thank you for being here. Thank you. Mackenzie, you want to give us your full name? Mackenzie Souser. All right. You want to give us your impressions of uh, um, today's events? Well, there was a lot of stories and a lot of stories told and a lot of tears. And I don't think they fully got it yet. I think, I think they don't fully understand how it is to be a 13-year-old without a dad or, you know, a, a mom with three kids and have your husband taken away I just I don't think they get it yet but I think I think it made a pretty good impression I think we're starting I think it's a good place to start so is there anything you would like to tell the people at home who maybe are not totally familiar with the events of two years ago a little bit of a background on well um you know my story or just both whatever comes to mind well um on September 12th I was at my ballet class and I was um we were gonna go home and have dinner with my dad and that that's always really fun you know I just that was my, the best part of every day was when my dad came home and um we we're gonna have dinner with him and I got pulled out of my dance class and I didn't know what was going on and they said there's been a train crash and I think oh well he's probably just you know had a broken leg or something he's probably fine and then I went to my friend's birthday party that night, and then my birthday party was the next day, my 13th birthday party. And um, the next day at about 5 o'clock, I was, obviously my birthday party was canceled. And I mean, our friend came out to me, and he said, they found your dad, and he didn't make it. And I think that's like the moment when I just, my life completely changed, and it just turned into something that had so many worries and so so hard and so different from all my friends' lives and I mean none of them can understand it. I mean I've had some great friends through it but their their lives are so much different from mine. I can't I can barely relate to them anymore and it's hard for me to hang out with them sometimes because they'll talk about going to like our church had a father daughter dance and that was something that was really hard is you know hearing them talk about that and they asked me if I was going and I just no, I'm not. <laughs> I can't, you know, and I think I think it's just things like that that the emotional loss is I mean there's physical money, like money, you know. I guess but I I guess I value like this whole thing more than that because it was the emotional loss more than that, you know. Yeah, he did make all the money for this for us and that, but it it was mostly that he was my dad and he was my best friend and he was he was the male influence that was making me into a godly young beautiful woman and inside and out and I just think that the emotional loss is so much more effective than the physical loss of that but yeah that was pretty much what happened so thank you so much yeah yeah thank you so much yeah <laughs> anytime I don't I'm not very good I'm only 15 so I don't really know how to you're doing great. Talk about all this stuff. You're doing great. The story of how a 15-year-old yeah. something like this is yeah. absolutely tragic. Yeah. And I mean, they all sound, the thing is that when I was in there, they all sound so composed, and they all have their stories written, and I didn't know what to say. So, I mean, I probably sounded dumb, but it's okay. the truth. It's always best. You know, it's the truth, and it's not, it's not like, it wasn't something that I wrote down, or, you know, I had to think about it. It was just... From the heart? It was true. So I think, I hope that came across. It did. Thank you. Yeah, anytime.